Uh, again, welcome uh, in the name of Christ. Uh, today we, uh, we observe the second Sunday in Lent, the second uh, of our um, second part of our journey to the cross. And uh, today we uh, specifically focus on, uh, on the cross of Jesus. Um, I'm going to ask if there are any prayer requests that you would like added to uh, to our prayers today, and just unmute your microphone if you if you're able to. Pastor, yes, friend uh, who has a friend and been diagnosed with something in her brain that only 160 people in the world have it, and they're going to try some experimental treatments on her. Um, and like me, my friend believes in the power of prayer. And what, what's your friend's name? Her name is Diane, but with two N's. Diane, okay. Um, and that's who we should be praying for, Diane? Yes, with okay. two N's. With two N's, okay. Uh, it's very, Make sure very that rare. God blesses the right person, right? Diane with two N's. So, go and, ahead. Uh, She's going in for experimental treatment in one of the hospitals in Boston. They can't do surgery. They can't do radiation. Um, okay. They found it by accident. Yeah. I'm, uh, we'd be happy to pray for her. Uh, Thank are you. There others, are there others for whom we should be praying? If not, then I would invite you to uh, join with me in the children's prayer. We did have Sunday school this morning, just one kid one kid showed up, but uh, uh, we went. Uh, we went with it, and uh, uh, and it's fun to do that. Susan, you should see Susan um, in front of the camera with the kids. It's just amazing. Uh, so thank you, Susan. Uh, let's begin with the children's prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for our homes. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our friends. Please keep us all healthy. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to, the, to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis, the 17th chapter. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. And I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. Indeed, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading. From, is from the book of Romans, the fourth chapter, beginning with the 13th verse. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead, and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations. According to what was said, so numerous will your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were, not written, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Gospel according to St. Mark, the eighth chapter. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. And he said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you're setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, That first lesson that was read for us by Greg from Genesis, the story of the first time God makes a covenant with Abraham and with Sarah. Just like, remember last week we heard about the covenant that God made with all creation The sign, the rainbow is the sign of that covenant. And remember how I said that that covenant was not an agreement between God and the creation. It was an act of grace on the part of God for the whole creation. Today, we read about another covenant, a different covenant. This is not made with the whole creation as last week's story told us. This covenant is made with a particular couple and with their descendants forever. And like that covenant with creation, this covenant is comes from God purely out of God's grace. There's nothing in the chapters before this, nothing that lets us, helps us or makes us understand that Abraham and Sarah are in any way incredibly righteous and therefore deserve to be given this gift by God. It's very, very similar to how Mary, the mother of Jesus, comes into the story. We are told nothing of her background. We're just told that God has chosen her out of all the women in the world. God has chosen Mary to bear God's son. In today's story, Of all the people of the world, God has chosen Abraham and Sarah. 
And God has made a unilateral promise with them, to them. I will make of you a great nation. You, hundred-year-old man and woman, will have a child. And through that child, a nation will arise. God didn't bargain with Abraham and Sarah. God didn't say, I'll do this for you if you do this for me. God said, I'm doing this. And they received the gift that God offered. They received it in faith. They let their lives be changed radically to carry out God's will in the world. In the story from Mark, Jesus also wants us to understand that this gift of salvation, it comes with a huge price tag, but it's not a price tag that we pay. The price tag for our sin, the price tag for our forgiveness, the price tag for our standing as saints of God, children of God, the price tag is the cross of Jesus. There, God himself stretched out his hands to offer himself for all people, for all creation. We don't deserve that gift. That's why it's called grace. We receive the gift. We take it into our lives. We let our lives become signs of grace, signs of God's love in the world, signs of God's reconciling work in the world. And sometimes we'll be persecuted is too strong a word in our context. Perhaps shunned, but there certainly are still places in the world where being a disciple of Jesus puts you at risk of your life or your well being. What God calls forth from us is not the sacrifice that leads to death but it is the sacrifice of ourselves for the sake of the world around us, participating in God's redemption of the whole creation. And it starts, it starts with our hearts being filled with grace, being filled with gratitude, being filled with love to the overflowing. In Jesus' name, amen.
We join in professing our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On this second Sunday in Lent, let us pray for the church and for all people in need. God of mercy and might, bless your church throughout the world and our congregation here at Grace. Uphold those believers who suffer for the sake of your gospel. Strengthen the faith of all the baptized and make your presence felt by us as we are still unable to gather for worship. Teach the people of this congregation to follow Jesus in humble service and cross-bearing as we enter into unknown but new and exciting ministries. Let our worship, words, and lights glorify you and build up the body of Christ. When we cry out, O faithful God, hear us, we pray. Bless the earth, save the animals and their habitats, from wild and uncontrolled weather. Teach us to live respectful of nature and to join you in tending to creation's well-being. When we cry out, O oh wondrous God, hear us, we pray. Bless the nations of the world. Raise up advocates for peace and justice within and between nations. Give life where hope seems dead. Call into existence new realities we cannot even imagine. Lead all people around the world to receive the COVID-19 vaccine with gratitude to you. When we cry out, O oh righteous God, hear us, we pray. Bless all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. We beg that you bring an end to the pandemic, restore medical systems, and comfort all who are sick or dying. Lead us out of the practices of discrimination. 
bring vindication for victims of injustice and relief to oppressed minorities. We remember before you, Landon, Linda, Terry, Phyllis, Jim, Melba, Alice, Paul, Ginny, Loretta, Lavon, Corey, Carl and Bev, Debbie, Eleanor, Dick, Jerry and Darlene, Eloise, Rick and Sandy, Rob, Ruth, Veronica, Joan, Montels, Jake, Leah, Diane, and those we mentioned either out loud or to ourselves. When we cry out, O oh, benevolent God, hear us, we pray. Bless families, those in our community, those waiting at national borders, those whose struggles are known only to you. Keep children safe, su sustain expectant parents, protect women in childbirth, accompany everyone who lives alone, equip the ministries and services of our church and LSSI that attend to families in their needs. When we cry mm -hmm. out, O oh, loving God, hear us, we pray. Fill each one of us with hope and receive our personal prayers. When we cry out, O oh, gracious God, hear us, we pray. Join and bless all those this week who celebrate the birthdays of Thomas Roth, Lorraine Beadler, Darlene Aspen, Cheyenne Martinez, Nancy Demkowski, Cheryl Hanna, Noah Roth, Landon Walger, Margaret Willis, Derek Ellerson, Dennis Ellerson, Nashiel Martinez, and also the baptisms of Daniel Ellerson and Grayson Walger. When we cry out, O oh, joyful God, hear us, we pray. Most Holy Father, we thank you for fulfilling your promises to those who have died and are at rest in you. Especially today, we bring before you your servant, Bob White. Comfort his family and friends. Wipe away their tears of grief. Keep us all calm and fearless, ever trusting in your love. Be our way, our truth, our life. Bring us to the final fulfillment of your blessing given to us by your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. When we cry out, O oh, everlasting God. Hear us, we pray. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to the Lord. To the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Come and eat and drink the gifts of God for all the people of God, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ poured out for you.
May this gift of the living body and body and blood of Christ strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer, the song of grateful hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord's face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us God's peace.
peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I've got a couple of announcements and then I will uh, let others who may have announcements um, un unmute their microphones and uh, share them with, with us. Uh, a couple of things. Um, this coming Wednesday night, we'll have our second uh, midweek uh, Lenten service. Uh, last week, we were uh, pleased to uh, hear about Advent Aurora Health uh, Care from uh, Kathy Bender Schwick. Uh, thank you, Kathy, for, uh, for sharing that part of our ministry with us. Uh, this coming week, uh, we're going to uh, begin our, our, our Lenten uh, experience at seven o'clock, same login that you use for Sundays. Um, the first 15 or so minutes uh, will be a, uh, a conversation between Jennifer de Leon, who's one of the lay leaders at La Trinidad, uh, the church in Humboldt Park that, uh, that we have a, a long standing relationship with. Um, and Jennifer is going to help us understand how, uh, how what we bring to the table helps them, uh, literally bring to the table, uh, helps them carry out uh, their ministry. And uh, we're also going to be talking about the possibilities of figuring out how to turn that around some and perhaps use some of the people from La Trinidad to help us reach out to our Spanish speaking neighbors. Um, that's all just kind of in the idea stage, but that's, um, that's uh, something that, uh, that we want to have further conversation about. Uh, so that is uh, Wednesday evening. Uh, the, following, uh, the following week, uh, we'll be looking at Lutheran Social Services of Illinois. And then we'll also be doing Lutheran Disaster Response and a Lutheran World Hunger. Uh, so those are all ways in which we, um, we extend our ministry beyond ourselves. Um, also next week during the, uh, during the service, in the place where we normally uh, have an offering, we'll be doing the installation of the new uh, the, uh, 2021 church council and officers. So that will be part of our service next Sunday. Um, other announcements? Pastor, did you want to talk about next Sunday? Are you going to be in person? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, I knew I had something real big that I was, I was forgetting. Uh, the church council voted this past Tuesday. Uh, many of you uh, know that uh, we will uh, return to uh, uh, to worship here in person um, starting next Sunday, March 7th. Um, if we can, we can have up to 50 people here. Um, the uh, last time we were open, we were, we were getting in the 20s. Um, you'll get uh, something either by email or in the mail uh, in the next couple of days that reminds you of the restrictions uh, if you are going to come to church, where to park, which, which doors to use and not use, which entrances to use, uh, how, to, how to seat yourselves, reminding you to, to bring a mask and to uh, stay masked throughout the service and, and so on. We'll remind you of all of that. But uh, yes, starting next Sunday at 10 o'clock, we'll be doing both. Uh, I mean, people will be here live uh, and we'll be doing it by Zoom. So uh, those many of you who are, are not, um, um, not going to be coming here will still have the, uh, the experience that we've been having for these many, many months. Thanks, Mike, for reminding me. Uh, other announcements. If you have any questions about the uh, reopening for worship, feel free to get in touch with me during the week. Um, we are not going to be uh, Wednesday evenings, we're not going to be um, gathering. Wednesday evenings will continue all through Lent to be um, to be by uh, by Zoom, and uh, we're still we're still figuring out the logistics for Holy Week. What we're what we're able to you know what we're able to do and what we're not able to do. 
uh, in, in terms of our Holy Week services. So stay tuned for that. Any other announcements? Uh, if not, then I would uh, invite you to unmute your mics and uh, enjoy uh, a, a bit of coffee hour. 